Okay guys, so this is part four. Um, I'm, we're going to go over all this stuff. And I'm kind of blown away because I just watched Brother Keith from Many Fishes video about this. And um, he reminded me in, in his video of uh, something that the Holy Spirit woke me up to the other day. And when I show you, <laughs> just kind of, it's like it can't be coincidence. There's just no way. So I'll, I'll get into that after we go over the stuff that I put in these videos last year. And, um, so what I'm going to do so that I don't have to say all this stuff again, is I'm going to play, uh, the video, videos that I put up last year, not them in their entirety, just the parts that, um, I want you to hear. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So let's listen to what I said, um, about this stuff. So, as I said, uh, this holiday is totally pagan in origin, and it has very evil connotations. And from what I can gather, mocking the crucifixion, which is one reason why, since second Passover and the first day of unleavened bread is falling in this time frame, that I found it necessary to uh, bring it out. Um, the... Well, let me just start with um, the main focus of May Day. It's, of course, it's a spring festival, so it, it has ties to uh, fertility in the spring. Um, I think um, the fertility part is pointing to uh, the bloodlines of the fallen ones. And the reason I say that is because, first and foremost, like I said, it's associated with fertility. And we know that Easter has its pagan origins. And, you know, all these gods and goddesses ultimately point back to the one that's king over them. And uh, who, of course, you know, wants his seed to be propagated on the earth. And um, for those of you who don't believe in that bloodline, um, you really need to go back and study Genesis because it's plainly there. So anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But um, the main focus, or like I said, it's a festival. So there's, you know, celebrating and whatnot, you know, dancing and um, eating foods and whatnot. But the main focus of this holiday is the Maypole. And uh, what I can see from looking at images of it, the ribbons that come off of it represent DNA strands, and I agree wholeheartedly. Um, because the pole originally, you know, they're made of, you know, different materials nowadays because it's been brought back, and they're, you know, the neo pagans have brought it back, and they're. Uh, celebrating it in full force just like a lot of the other pagan holidays are doing now so um so the pole itself is made of different materials you know modern materials but it, when it was first originated they would cut down a tall tree and attach the ribbons to it and it's usually young girls and young boys that are dancing around the maypole they hold on to a ribbon and the girls go in one direction and the boys go in the opposite direction and their uh, ribbons intertwine and as they intertwine and go around the pole it uh, forms a weaving pattern on the pole so I believe that definitely has to do with um, the mingling of DNA between the fallen ones and uh, mankind and on the top of the maypole usually has a garland of a hawthorn bush which has pretty flowers on it uh, but it also has and, it, and the hawthorn bush is also known as the may bush the garland is placed at the top of the pole and uh, just so happens that the hawthorn bush is laden with very long thorns and there is conjecture that it was this 
bush, this plant that was used to make the crown of thorns that was placed on Yeshua's head. And, and at first I, I mean, there's, you know, there was mention of it in different articles. And then I thought, well, let me make sure that, that this bush actually grows in Jerusalem. And it does. So I basically, my interpretation of this whole thing is that the, the maypole represents the tree of uh, life because he, they did cut down a live tree, um, which is Yeshua, and it could also represent the cross and the garland of hawthorn flowers representing the crown of thorns that was placed on his head and the mocking by Hashatan that the DNA is mingled. That in itself is, you know, definitely uh, blasphemous, but there's more. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, read, like, basically the highlights of things I've highlighted in here. I'm not going to read all this nonsense, but... It, these are the origins and celebrations. Earliest May Day celebrations appeared with the Floralia Festival of Flora, the Roman goddess of flowers, held on April 27th. Uh, there's a, the date of 27 that other people have seen, 27th, uh, during the Roman Republic era, and with the Walpurgis well Night celebrations of the Germanic countries. And this is always a total pagan stuff, like I said. Um, it's also associated with the Gaelic Beltane. M most of this stuff uh, comes from the area where the tribe of Dan went and settled. The British Isles, uh, basically what is the UK now, and then parts of uh, Europe, Western Europe. A, just the name Beltane, it's, a, it's tied to the... Uh, spring festivals of celebrating fertility and all kinds of uh, debauchery and as you see in the name Beltane there's the name Baal uh, and we know who that is um, most commonly held on April 30th uh, it usually begins in the evening these holidays just like the the um, Hebrew calendar it says May 1st was the first day of summer uh, in European pagan cultures and then it became Christianized that was just like all the other pagan holidays just to cover up to many of them and to get Christians to go along with them um, of course the Catholic Church is involved and they actually celebrate this still supposedly and just dedicated as a day uh, revering Mother Mary, like they like to do, May devotions to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I hope to my Catholic brothers and sisters, please don't take offense, this is not about you or your faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior. This is about the organization of the Roman Catholic Church, and um, if you don't know the origins of the church saying you really need to do some research um the queen of heaven is mentioned in the bible and um she is god's adversary and that's who the catholic church calls who they pretend to be mary mother mary of jesus it's really the queen of heaven that they are worshiping and disguising her as the mother of jesus and she is none other than the one who's coming back as a female. And we know who that is. That's the whole tie-in to the Baphomet statue. So so please don't take offense to what I'm saying if you're Catholic. But please, I pray that you come out of that religion and just seek the Lord Jesus yourself. You don't need... Jesus is your intermediary to, to the Father, not anyone else. Um, so anyway, the Catholic Church, uh, of course deified a person as a saint, Saint Walburga, and it, 
And as it uh, puts on that in a second, uh, and it says at the bottom, in the late 20th century, many neo pagans began reconstructing traditions and celebrating May Day as a pagan religious festival, and they do still to this day. It's also associated with Burning Man, uh, the Wicker Man, all, all this about celebrating um, certain times of year and lighting bonfires, and um, which has to do with sacrifice. So. So when I saw that it was the first day of summer, and it is uh, according to the calendar that I'm following, which could be off by, you know, a day or two, um, when I saw the word summer, I immediately was reminded of um, Amos 8, and also uh, the parable of the fig tree, the lesson of the fig tree, where uh, Yeshua says, look at the fig tree and all the trees when they sprout leaves and you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Um, he's saying to pay attention when you see uh, the fig tree sprouting and that has to do with the um, nation of Israel coming into being 70 years ago. And like I said, you know, they just celebrated two days ago. I'm doing this on the Oh, three days ago, on the 21st of April, uh, their 70th anniversary of being a nation. So the lesson of the fig tree definitely ties into um, this summertime because he says, uh, you know, that summer is near. Um, and, of course, it goes on to say, so also when you see these things taking place, you will know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be watchful for the day, but watch yourselves or your hearts will be weighed down by dissipation, drunkenness, and the worries of life. And that day will spring upon you suddenly like a snare. And that's why we keep, um, you know, if it will come upon, let me finish reading, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. So keep watch at all times. And pray that you may have the strength to escape all that is about to happen and stand before the Son of Man. So, you know, this is why I'm putting this video out. Because um, it's pointing to a time frame. Uh, don't know if the rapture is going to happen. Don't know if anything is going to happen. It could just be another marker in time. So, as a watchman, this is what we do. I also came across a few verses having to do with summer fruit as well that I want to read too. Um, Isaiah 28 verse 4. Well, I'm going to read all four verses. Judgment on Ephraim. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat bellies of them that are overcome with wine. Behold, Adonai hath a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm as a flood of mighty waters overflowing shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet. And the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be a fading flower. And as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth it, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. Wow, if that's not a warning to the United States, I don't know what is. And as a matter of fact, that judgment has pretty much already begun. And then, of course, there's Amos 8, which says, it's about the basket of ripe fruit. Thus hath the, the Lord God, Adonai Elohim, Yahuwah, showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said Yahuwah unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith Adonai Elohim Yahuwah. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to the poor, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat? making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit. That's saying they don't want to honor the Sabbath. Or they don't hold it in high regard. That we may buy the poor for silver and be needy, and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. 
Yahweh has sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up holy as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Adonai, Yahuwah, Elohim, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Here is another reference to Passover. This is what happened when Yeshua was on the cross. The sun went down at noon. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, and I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. Also, as you see in uh, verse 2, um, when he says he sees a basket of summer fruit, he says, The end has come upon my people, Israel. I will not again pass by them.